Just a short message before the video. Did you know gaming's sister show Did You Know Movies has moved from the film theorists to the all-new Normal Booch channel? Check it out by clicking the links in the corner or at the top of the description. You should also check out our new show Madness where we talk about N64 games with Peanut Butter Gamer, Pro Jared, and The Completionist. Did you know? Although Monster Hunter World is the fifth entry in the mainline Monster Hunter series, Capcom purposely avoided calling the game Monster Hunter 5. The team decided on a name that wouldn't discourage newcomers, but also highlighted the title's concept of a living, breathing world. Using the power of modern hardware, developers were able to create the illusion of a persistent world that'd continue even if the player was away. Even the simple additions of more verticality and slopes needed additional processing power, as the more complicated terrain demanded better AI for the monsters. Pathfinding was a particular concern for the team, as the monsters needed to respond realistically to the ground they walked on as they chased players. The hunter also needed to be able to keep up with more agile monsters, so the controls were updated as well. Since the game no longer had loading screens between zones, players could be ambushed at any point and wouldn't be able to retreat to a new area the same way as before. Because players now had to be prepared to fight at all times, the designers allowed them to move as they drank potions. They also added areas for the player to hide and regroup if they found themselves in a tricky situation. However, if the player was able to stop and hide at any point, it would disrupt the rhythm of the game too much. To combat this, the monsters were given the ability to track the hunter by scent. After seeing some of these changes and that the announcement of the game was aimed at a Western audience, many fans were worried that the game might be dumbed down for new players. Senior producer Ryozo Sujimoto and game director Yuya Takuda came out to address these concerns. Even though the game was more streamlined than ever, the development staff were more dedicated to preserving the satisfaction of Monster Hunter's gameplay. Loot boxes and microtransactions were ruled out completely. If players could buy weapons and armor instead of working for them, there'd be friction between the players and their allies, which would hinder the experience. Ryozo Sujimoto told US Gamer, We want you to go in and, through gameplay, find out what's causing you to hit this hurdle and figure it out. Whenever you get over that hurdle yourself, it's such a great feeling. Why would we let you skip that just to make a bit of extra money? It doesn't make any sense. At the beginning of Monster Hunter World's development in 2015, open-world games generally tried to sell themselves on the size of their world rather than their content. Recognizing this, the Monster Hunter team focused on depth rather than breadth. Yuya Takuda noted as much in his design documents, emphasizing that environments ought to be just large enough for players to make use of them. So, instead of a single, enormous map for the entire game, World used a number of smaller, more detailed maps. The game's open world and ecosystem were inspired by trailers for the original Monster Hunter. Since he saw these trailers in 2004, Takuda wanted to make a game with an ecosystem of monsters to fight, rather than having a more traditional villain. The trailers even motivated him to get a job at Capcom, with his goal being to make a Monster Hunter game that realized the vision of those original trailers. Tsujimoto approached Takuda to be the director of the new game, giving him two tasks, to create a next-gen Monster Hunter for home consoles and to make a game that would be enjoyed in both Japan and the West. The team had trouble grasping how Takuda's open-world vision would work, so he storyboarded a sequence of events to demonstrate them. A team of around 50 to 70 people then set to work on making a prototype, which was completed in November of 2015. The environment was such a strong focus that the game's initial prototype didn't even have combat programmed in. The hunter had to evade monsters or dispatch them indirectly. As there was no combat, a lot of the prototype focused on monster interactions. Monster behavior was made more complex so that they would attack one another and they could have more dynamic interactions with the player. This came at a great time and financial cost to the team, but they knew it was the only way to truly realize Takuda's vision. The AI was so nuanced that the team would often see their public demonstrations of the game disrupted by an unexpected monster behavior. One addition to the prototype didn't make it to the final game, however. The end of the prototype saw the player face off against Legiacris, who was cut due to its animations proving too costly. Due to the new setting, Capcom decided that World should focus on new creatures rather than reusing previous monsters from the series. The monsters' capabilities and the challenge they would present to players were conceived first and foremost, with the environments being a secondary concern. 
levels would often be changed to accommodate the attributes of certain monsters, which helped the monsters feel like a natural part of their surroundings. The design team took inspiration from animals or objects they associated with the creature's core concept. For example, a fast monster could be inspired by anything from a rabbit to a car. Legiana in particular was inspired by a plane with its wings having different sections to allow it to maneuver. The power of current-gen consoles also allowed the team to realize ideas that they'd never implemented before. Nergigante is covered by over 1,000 thorns across its entire body, and each one of those thorns are completely independent of one another, meaning that they can be lost and regrown individually. While having hundreds of additional objects to track and process may not have been impossible on past hardware, the additional power of newer systems certainly gives developers more freedom to implement these often taxing features. The monsters in the game also have some interesting inspirations from wildlife. Anjanath seems to be based on modern depictions of large carnivorous dinosaurs such as the Tyrannosaurus. Most paleontologists now believe that creatures such as the T-Rex had feathers on at least some parts of their body, as evidence of feathers has been found on their close genetic relatives. Anjanath can also be seen marking its territory in the game with saliva and even defecating. Concept art for the monster implies that Anjanath was originally planned to mark its territory by spraying bodily waste instead. Although the Great Jargus resembles an iguana, its behavior was based on far larger lizards. The creature can consume huge amounts of prey in one sitting, not unlike Komodo dragons. The game's developers have mentioned how the Great Jargus was inspired by their observations of some reptiles, and how they can look much larger after gorging themselves. Komodo dragons in particular can eat up to 80% of their body weight in a single sitting. The Puke Puke has one of the world's most eclectic designs, which changed many times as it was being created. The creature was originally based on a flower, ultimately leading to its colorful appearance. And interestingly, the sound design of the Puke Puke was based on an accordion. Sound director Hideke Hisoi told The Verge, We use the visual design as a foundation for what we want to do with the sounds. So we first decide on what kind of sounds fit the monster's look, and then we also consider what kind of cues we want the sounds to convey to the player. In the case of the Puke Puke, one of our design concepts was the sound of an accordion. The accordion reflects the movement of its mouth and its tail, how it contracts and expands. We were thinking about how we could make that sound as if an accordion were a living thing. Monster Hunter World was released worldwide for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on January 26, 2018, with the PC version arriving August 9th. As the first Monster Hunter game to be released on home consoles since 2009, the team took the opportunity to fulfill many fan requests they've received over the years. One example of this is the limited time events which take advantage of the always online nature of current home consoles. The long delay between the console and PC releases was due to the team's inexperience with the PC platform. As it was the first time the Monster Hunter team in Osaka were working on a title for the PC, they wanted to give themselves time to do necessary research and preparation developing for new hardware. They only started to work on the port once the console versions were complete. The Monster Hunter series has enjoyed many collaborations with other franchises, and World is no exception. Costumes based on Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, Ryu and Sakura from Street Fighter, Dante from Devil May Cry, and even an 8-bit Mega Man costume from Palicos were all included in the game. Street Fighter V even got Monster Hunter skins of its own in return. Arguably, the biggest collaboration was with Final Fantasy XIV, with the two games exchanging the Rathalos and Behemoth from their respective franchises. The crossover was the result of Final Fantasy XIV's producer and director, Naoki Yoshida, meeting Sujimoto as Final Fantasy XIV was being relaunched after its initial failed release. Sujimoto was almost angry when he heard the game was being relaunched. Worried about the high stakes of the project, he offered his and Capcom's help should Yoshida ever need it. While Yoshida declined at the time as he didn't want to piggyback off of Capcom's success, the mass appeal of Monster Hunter World presented the perfect opportunity for the pair to collaborate. Both teams were in close communication throughout, making sure that each was happy with what the other was doing with their monsters. Yoshida wanted to make sure that their titles brought out the best in each other. For example, if players couldn't break Behemoth's horn in Monster Hunter, people would complain that Square Enix was being too protective of their property, so he made sure that this was possible. Takuda and art director Konami Fujioka discussed other crossovers they'd like to see become a reality. One thing that they mentioned was that they wanted to collaborate with Blizzard and add a costume based on the Lich King from Warcraft.
Did you also know that there was a Shrek forum called Shrek Chan where fans shared their passion for the franchise? Or that Shrek's art director was chased by an alligator while researching locations for the film? For more facts, check out our video on Shrek movies. Or if you're looking for something different, check out Madness, where the Normal Boots boys argue over what's the best in 64 game.